Um, that shouldn't cause any problems. No. And this is my wiring where we got to wire into. What's the goes in and goes out of here? Uh, right here, and we've got our uh, we've got our outlet here, so our hot water is actually going to come out directly out of the pump, and then it's going to our inlet is right here on the top of the can. A lot of that is a uh, you know we, the uh, the air uh, that could get in the line. This will keep the air out of the line, and that'll keep uh, us just flowing liquid through it. Okay, so. Um you're going to hook this up. This this goes into the inlet, into the firewall. Right. This is the outlet, and right. so the, our environmental system thinks this is an internal combustion engine. Yes, it's going to be providing hot water, and that's all that that heater core is really looking for. Okay. I want to put this in. I want to wire our control to a toggle switch we're going to add to the dash. But we're also looking for an opportunity to pick up a signal from our environmental control system. Yes. Um, you've been going through some of that um, technical information from the um, technical information. Um. What, what, we're, what we've done is we've just gone and subscribed directly to the BMW technical information system, and it does outline. Uh, it really is the only place that you can get any technical information on a Mini Cooper that's this new. Mm -hmm. um, all the other manuals really stop at 2006. So we go in online, do searches, look all this up. We've got great wiring diagrams. Everything's interactive, linked to each other. It's kind of complex, and they are making the assumption that we're BMW trained mechanics. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we will be after we're done with this uh, okay. at some level. But that's uh, that's a subscription we have. We've got a great great uh, technical resource. The other thing I'm I'm kind of thinking about is. Um since we don't know exactly how that signal works, a lot of times there'll be a little valve in there that regulates the mm -hmm. flow of water through, um, and we don't want to overcook this thing. What we might consider then is a thermostat, uh, in addition to our on-off switch, mm -hmm. where we turn it on, but uh, if the thermostat gets to some preformed uh, 95 degrees centigrade or just below boiling, for example, that it would cut out. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's some of the things we're looking at with the wiring. We haven't made final decisions at this point in the game, but uh, um, in mounting it and getting it plumbed in, we really don't have to. We'll deal with it in the wiring phase of this. But I'm thinking a toggle switch and thermostat um, where if I put the switch to on, it'll come on till it gets to just below boiling, say, and then it switches out, and then as it falls, it'll come back on in case we can't get a good match with um, something in the environmental system. And in any event, our environmental system should work as it always has and just treat this as a source of hot water. Right. Brain here is going to show us how to mount that on the firewall, and uh, the uh, the mini had some kind of cool hoses. Um, tell me about that. What what did we find on there? Well, what we got is they they have a connector um, that that comes that uh, comes on the end of the hose. It's about a three quarter inch hose. It's metric, I'm sure. We're going to be using three quarters, and uh, we're going to step that down to a five eighths. Are coming out of these. But they did have it, and it's it's, it's nice. It's a uh, it's a molded connector that goes right onto the uh, uh, right onto the to the unit to the core, and then uh, just pins down with a uh, with a with a pin you slide through it, and they work really great. Okay, really nice I connection. like those connectors, so we can steal those. We can steal those and patch into them where they'll do this. It's kind of like a quick connect. It's, it really is a quick connect, and they're all over this mini because we had them in the vacuum lines, mm -hmm. fuel lines. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got some pretty cool connections in there. Well, let's try to steal that connection and get this wired in where we can pull it out. Now, the top of this is going to extend above our equipment shelf where we could add mm -hmm. uh, glycol and ethanol, or glycol and water, um, top this off at any time, right? Right, Without we'll, be, we'll, we'll have complete access. It's going to be back against the firewall, and it'll be just slightly above our uh, equipment shelf. Yeah, it's back center, which isn't real convenient, but we'll be able to reach it. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and I think that'll that'll make a big difference. So, 750 bucks, but you got your pump built in, you got your switch circuitry built in, you got some fault circuitry built in that'll switch this thing down and may even solve, I'll have to read some more, may even solve our uh, temperature, temperature. Um, problem. And, um, and a pretty simple then connection to the pack and a 12 volt um, 
and ground signal to switch it. So I, I love this unit. That's, uh, that's what we're going to do. And the only thing between us and success then is Brian figuring out how to, uh, uh, and this is where the small problem solving uh, gets, uh, how to mount that as artfully as possible, mm -hmm. as securely as possible. I don't like vibration right. noises or pump noises, so we're going to shock mount it, a little bit of rubber. Uh, get it on there secure, and I don't want to have to deal with fluid leaks. Yeah, we don't like it. Today, we're going to go ahead and hook up our water hoses. We've got our MESDEA unit over here. Uh, we want to dry fit all of these hoses. Also, we have some, the, the hoses that came off of the mini stock have these really nice connectors on them. It goes directly onto the inlets and outlets. I don't know if you could see this before when we're taking everything out, but we grab this with a pair of pliers. It's got a little wire retainer. It slips over the, uh, the inlet and outlet of the heater core, presses on and it stays firm. The problem is they have these little stainless uh, rings on here that can only be cut off. They're not hose clamps. So we're gonna go ahead and take these apart um, they've got these little clips on them. We'll just get one of them off of there. We're going to have to use a Dremel tool and we're going to cut that off. Before we do that, I just want to talk to you about the pieces that we've put together here. We've got a couple of hoses, uh, some lengths of foot each of hose of a three-quarter inch inner diameter hose, five-eighths, which will go ahead and bend a little better. Uh, the reason that we're not using the molded hoses, you can see when you when we go ahead and make a bend, if we're trying to route it up to our new location, this was made to go directly up to the, uh, to the housing where the water's coming together, the thermostat housing on top of the, uh, the stock mini engine. Kind of give a little too much of a curve and it just wants to kink. And we've cut the flow enough there and you can see we've cut it completely. We don't want to take any chances with, uh, with cutting our water flow out. So we've got that, three quarters, five eighths, also, a couple of reducers that allow us to go from that three-quarter inch hose into a five-eighths inch hose, and uh, four hose clamps. All of this was readily available at any auto parts store. So we're going to go ahead and cut these. There are little flanges on them. We don't want to cut through them. We just want to get enough through this, uh, uh, enough through this stainless uh, where we are where we are uh, feeling comfortable. Safety glasses are always a good thing. Uh, I can't seem to focus very well with safety glasses on, so I'm gonna put my, my readers here, don't tell anybody. Dremel tool. Again, whatever you can cut this off with, there aren't any tabs or anything, so we're just gonna go ahead and cut it. So we're gonna start this up here. Set it maybe about eight or six. And let's see what, what kind of damage we start to make with this thing, and I'll see if I can get it in an angle where you might be able to you might be able to see. Again, we're just being careful with the, with the little flanges. It looks like we may have it here. Don't want to go after that when it's hot with your fingers as I just wanted to do. But it looks like we can peel this off. Good. Break that hose down. No damage at all to the flange. We're going to do that on the other one. Let's see, get a look here. We're going to work this three quarter inch in. And let's have to slip a hose clamp over this. I'm going to work the uh, three quarter inch hose in here. And again, we'll. Uh, We'll pick back up in a little bit after we play with this because um, we're going to have to do some routing and some work with that, uh, with that, with that coupler and that 5 8 inch hose. But we will uh, bring you back up to speed here in a little bit as we uh, start to assemble this. So we've got the uh, MES heater in here now. We're going to go ahead and mark this off the brackets as we showed you before, uh, what they look like. And now we're going to start the, uh, the installation itself. So we're going to go ahead and mark right through here onto the firewall and there we go and one more over here just have to make sure that we've got all this 
centered like it was. And we're going to make a mark over here. And there we go. And that's how it's going to look. Uh, we've made sure that our wire is clear over here on the, uh, on the electric motor for the uh, power assist steering. And it's nice and straight. This is where our filler is going to be right here on the, or is, excuse me, on the top. So we need to have this positioned vertically. And we want it up against the bulkhead. We've got it resting here on the, uh, uh, on the power steering unit again. And we've mounted a little, uh, as you've seen, we mounted a little rubber dampener. And we're also going to be using rubber dampeners here. But next we're going to be uh, doing a little bit of drilling here.